Hey guys, Daniel here and welcome to part whew, 23, am I right? I, I don't even know it, I, I forgot to look it up. I hope it's part 23 and I'm not wrong about that. And today we're going to um, do some final details, as for example, hair accessories. Accessories? I know how to say it. anyways. Um, so actually, you see the reference. It's quite undefined. I'm wasn't sure myself what this should be. I uh, just with the color and such. Uh, so even though we don't know it, let's try to come up with something. So similar as always, let's start with the plane and the only vertices and set it to mirrored because that's a good way to start always and to get the first word uh, word takes in place. Use the snapping tools with face uh, snapping to get it on the surface and then. Turn it off again. Let me just turn this off for a quick so you can follow along with my shortcuts. And let's get started with it. So I think it might look good if we just go with some um, bit standard ribbons, maybe uh, thin ones, not not those very thick ones, just like a thin piece of fabric. Um, there, so be careful not to lose the little vortex because we don't want to have an object uh, in the end that's not used. And let's start with um, this similar to what we did here. Let's also use again the solid form modifier just to get a feeling of the thickness in combination with a subdivision surface. And smooth it if you want to. Now, let's see. I think I'm going to start it into this direction. So, we will start rather thin about here and then get a bit thicker um, and twist it a bit. So, that's kind of. So, as you can see, I try to stay worry. Um, uh, worry just with very low amounts of vertices, just so I have as much as possible control over them. Sin especially since I really don't know yet, even now, what it's going to be. I just have a very rough idea. Uh, I think it's especially important to work in a way that allows you to edit a lot while working on it. So I think you can slowly start to see uh, what. I'm trying to do so kind of a ribbon it's kind of got a bit thick though but I think it's not a bad thing we'll just see how it turns out um, I'll make it thicker now um, since the, the design changed a bit and make this one yeah it looks that looks not bad. Um, let's try this very quickly uh, on the other side as well. Um, and see if this in general looks like it's working or if it's bad. No, but I think that looks okay. It's not bad. You can be creative here and do your own thing. Um, but I think I'll now continue with this one. And yeah, just make it more beautiful from here on. So, of course, the ribbon is not just these two parts. Um, for example, here in the middle, there should be some kind of knot. And it's always um, an interesting, at least I, I like working on these kind of things because you have to decide on how much detail you're actually going to put in it and what you're going to fake. For example, this is in reality just one piece of cloth that's you know, similar to a knot. But we're not going to make everything in a single piece, but we're trying to fake the same look by just modeling the um, the surface of it. And I guess that was a bit... Well, well anyways, I'm not sure if you know what I mean, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, all I'm going to do is simply Trying to to make this look reasonable in some ways, um, to give the impression of a real knot without having to 
uh, mount the whole complex. Um, yeah, you know, the way this, this thing looks. So I think actually uh, the truth about this room is that you uh, can't even do that, or can you? I'm not sure if you can manage to, to make it even like this. <laughs> I have no ideas about rooms, so, so no. let's talk about something different. So uh, one thing that we definitely want to add is those two ends that are normally there. I think some people also make four of those. Um, as I said, I, I I have no idea about it, but it's just a matter of how you like it to look. So let's start with two and and see how that works first. And this is still a very really, um, rough version. We still uh, we can, for example, now add a, another loop here and one more here and here, and then do stuff like this, for example, to give it some um, more visible flow in the piece of cloth so that similar to what we did with the hair actually want to give and see uh, how thick this actually is and um, let me explain very quick why I'm working this thick you know in reality it would probably look a bit more like this so it would have a bit more crease and it would be thinner something like that which would look really cool um, but I normally work for 3D print, or at least if that's what you want to do, I suggest you to work rather thick in first place because um, you'll have trouble with, uh, you know, the minimum wall thickness and stuff like that, and that's just a way to um, take your stuff some work uh, from later and fix it right away. Um, yeah. So now I, I wind a bit thinner uh, compared to before, um, but that should be right. I'm still not sure. I think I talked about that in one of the previous videos. I'm still not sure about what should become of this model. Um, I'd be glad if you would um, share your ideas in the comments. Um, so maybe this uh, could be then um, kind of a sequel to this tutorial series. So if, for example, some of you are interested in 3D printing, um, I could continue uh, with this model and show you how to prepare it for 3D print. Or if you guys want to do some animations with uh, 3D models, I could try to make a tutorial on rigging and animation, even though I'm not really good at it. Or if you like illustrations or stuff like that, why not ask for uh, materials and such? Um, or I could do multiple of those tutorials, I don't know. Just let me know what you guys would like to see. I think um, this mall here is a pretty good base for lots of upcoming tutorials since I'm going to share it and uh, you guys will be able to follow along with the same model or your own model uh, that you were able to create with help of this tutorial maybe. So yeah, I think there's a lot of things we could do. And about what I'm doing right now, you see uh, I just added a few loop cuts along this and I'm trying to add some more detail. Yeah, kind of like that. Just do something here that I would like. So whenever I, I copy something to mirror it to, to the other side, make sure not to... Um, um, you don't have to do it, you can do it in different ways, but I like mirroring it, so... I use scale along one axis and then I type in minus one to um, mirror it completely and then start to adjust it. It will give you um, a more believable variation of the first um, object. It will look like you actually went through the work of creating 
a second version of the same thing. Um, but if you want to walk faster, that's how you can be more efficient, I guess. But it's of course always a matter of how much you want to put effort in. I mean, if you think uh, you want to um, make it as good as possible, why not just put the time in and um, mold everything? So, yeah, it's up to you to decide. So, I guess it would look cool if we would still add some more stuff, but currently I'm out of ideas. So let's just leave it like this uh, for now. So this is my review preview in the shaded mode that I set up. Um, by the way, if you're interested in that, uh, I switched it here to GLSL shading, and I gave it a material um, that is pretty simple, so it does not have a uh, specular. The only thing I did is I added a ramp uh, with normal input, and that's basically it. The light setup is something like this, so there's one green light here and another one that fills it up. Yeah, so it's very soft setup and really not a big deal. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I guess that's all I want to show you in this video. We're very close to the finished alley. Let's see. I think I. You see, I'm not very really sure yet how much I'm going to um, show you more than this because all, everything I showed you now are the fundamentals of character modeling. I think. I mean, every character has hair. Every character needs some kind of cloth and. Uh, I showed you some techniques of modeling clothes and simulating clothes and modeling hair in various ways uh, long hair, short hair and hair that's only a block without strands I showed you some accessories um, the body in general used, and everything left from here on would be for example that kind of I don't know what this is called glove similar thing and and these clothes things here, sorry, <laughs> I need to learn more vocabulary. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess I'll still continue it for myself, but um, about the commentary I'm not so sure. Maybe we'll continue a bit with the eyes and give her some eyebrows, because that's obviously still left to do. And, you know, there are lots of things I would add if this was now a, if this should become a finished product. You know, like for example, back here it could be a ribbon, uh, or instead of back there, here in the front. It all depends on what uh, you want to do, how much detail you want to have, what purpose this is for, and stuff like that. But I guess this tutorial series would go on for another 20 parts if I would do every detail here. So probably there won't be much more parts than uh, this. and. It will be maybe a time lapse video, just how I finished it up. Yeah, but thank you for following everything until here. I'll probably make one or two more parts about it. And thank you for watching as always. See you.